as I am an author of children's literature, it behooves me to inform you that there is a little bit of coarse language in this video. My favorite place to be on Thanksgiving is actually my ex-boyfriend's parents' house, which is not weird, or at least it shouldn't be, because they are wonderful people and I love them just as much as I ever did. Steve's brother David and his sister-in-law Adrienne are also plant-based, so they do vegan Thanksgiving every year, and our friend Jason and I come along. Sorry. You now get plastered, you bad <laughs> 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 So I took the train from DC up to Philadelphia the Saturday before, met up with a new friend for coffee, and of course we had to go for a breakfast sandwich at Love Vegan Deli at the Reading Terminal Market. This video doesn't give you a sense of just how meat heavy most of the stalls are, but I just can't bear to get too close to the butcher counters. It is so weird that people pose with this brass statue, but do they think about the lives of the pigs they eat? Point is, I'm really grateful that Love is here to offer folks a kinder, healthier alternative. And I like that they ironically preserve the old buttermilk signage. <laughs> I hopped on the bus to meet Steve and Jason, and though takeout from Veg Out in Bethlehem was the dinner plan, we kept calling to place our order and the line was busy. That's good. <laughs> <laughs> but we love our hashtag vegan problems. <laughs> Veg Out is everything you want in a junk food vegan restaurant. Quality ingredients, but very decadent. Next time, I'm going to try the ice cream. What did you get? This is the Big Mac hoagie. Big Mac hoagie. Grilled vegan chicken, arugula, roasted red peppers, sun-dried tomatoes, gouda, balsamic mayo on rye, roasted potatoes on the side. What you got there? Smoked Gouda grilled cheese sandwich. Delicious. Mm, it's good. Grilled cheese is the ultimate comfort food. I'd have to agree. I think it's on sourdough. Mm. We went thrifting and then to this fabulous antique mall. This is my kind of holiday shopping. The vintage quilts in this place were unbelievable. I really wanted this one, but I wouldn't let myself get it because I have four, count them, four unfinished quilt projects at home. So I just let myself appreciate the skillful hand quilting. I also lusted after this jadeite bowl, but it was 50 bucks and I already have a jadeite fruit bowl and a mixing bowl, so I couldn't justify it. I did pick up two cookie cutters, which I may also use for frying tofu because that's fun. But like I said in the Italy video, once you go vegan, you see evidence of cruelty where you would have passed right over it before. This used to be a living creature. I enjoy nostalgia and old-fashioned things, but only when they aren't cruel to creatures who cannot defend themselves. The next morning we went to Vegan Treats, which is, yep, as heavenly as it sounds. They didn't have danishes or cinnamon buns that morning, so it was cannolis for breakfast for me, whole food sushi for lunch to balance that out. And that evening, I baked an upside down pear gingerbread cake for Steve's dad's birthday. This is what it's supposed to look like. <gasps> no! No, oh. no, no! Guess what? You can fix it. I can fix it. I can fix it. The recipe is veganized from a cookbook called Vegetarian Classics by Jean Lemlin. It's one of my very favorite holiday desserts. The recipe is linked below. And Wednesday was Nationwide Film Release Day. It was so exciting to get texts and photos from my friends at theaters in New England and Texas and Minnesota and Utah and Ireland and I forget where else, lots of places. My friends are the best. Hey, Jason. Hi there. What are you listening to? I'm listening to your book. Oh my goodness. Bones and all. You are the oh. only person who has ever listen to my audiobook while we are hanging out together at the same time at the same time i'm on chapter nine chapter nine of I'll how be, many chapters i forgot there's a total of 12. okay and i'm happy to say i'll be finished before we see it on the big screen at 4 p.m yay <laughs> 
shout out to Isabella and the other lovely folks at the local AMC. It was so kind of you to give me a poster and even offer me the big display in the lobby. Afterwards, Jason and Steve and I went with my new friend Molly. Molly writes Urban Fantasy. Check her out. The link is below. And her partner Matt to a spot called Cali Burrito for dinner. I got one with black beans, cabbage, guacamole, and seitan. More on seitan in a minute. Amazing fancy salsas here. My favorite was the garlic. Now it's Thursday and time to talk turkeys. Here I am with a turkey chick I met at Unity Farm Sanctuary in Massachusetts a few years ago. They love to be cuddled. Genesis Butler is a young animal rights activist who is tremendously inspiring to me, so I wanted to share her perspective with you here. As an indigenous vegan, Thanksgiving is a difficult day for me. I wake up with the thought of the 46 million turkeys who will be eaten today. I think about my ancestors who wanted to help colonizers, and as a thank you, they got deadly diseases, land stolen, and genocide in return. It is my hope that one day, this day, will become a tradition where people celebrate what they are thankful for without having to take part in the killing of millions of sentient beings. I hope it becomes a day that is a celebration of the resilience of the native people of this land. I hope they teach students about how amazing turkeys are and how they are unique beings who are so loving and are deserving of life. Genesis Butler's Instagram link is in the video notes below. I know I'm posting this video well after Thanksgiving, so just keep this in mind next November. No matter what your family and friends are doing, you can opt out. You can tweak a tradition so it aligns with your ethical beliefs. I'm not going to tell you it's easy when your family is asking why you don't want to partake and maybe even being hostile or defensive about it, but if you take a deep breath and maybe make a yummy vegan side dish and invite them to try it, over time, these interactions will get easier. Okay, now on to our main dish, Steve's seitan cutlets. In case you're not familiar, seitan is made from wheat, so it's high in protein, and it was developed in China all the way back in the sixth century. So while we may prepare it in various ways now, it is by no means a newfangled food. Full disclosure here, I have not had a great time making seitan at home, at least not the recipes that call for simmering on the stove. This one turned out well because I only had to bake it, but it's not as good as Steve's. But this is part of my point, to become a better cook over time, to enjoy experimenting in the kitchen and coming up with iterations of a recipe that are ever more delicious. Okay, well, I'm recording now. Okay. I'm sorry for the audio here. I didn't mic him because I knew he'd complain about the cord getting in the way. How really did you get to be a satanic master, Stephen? Satanic. Listening to heavy metal <laughs> when I was in my youth. Uh, so, uh, I had, uh, for one Thanksgiving, we had, and I believe it was a Miyoko's product ages ago, maybe 2006 or seven. Uh, the unturkey that I liked. So then when my sister-in-law decided to have a vegan Thanksgiving here. that my family refused to do for the 10 or so years prior to that, that I had been vegan, um, and then everybody thought it was such a great idea that it was, I made, I found online a recipe for, yep, yeah, pretty close. <laughs> for what? Well, that, it, I'm getting there. Um, a recipe for the Miyoko's unturkey. I believe it was Miyoko's for the oh. unturkey. And because of the 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 herbs and spices, the seitan loaf came out kind of a greenish brown, <laughs> and then it got wrapped in uh, yuba. Yes. which is tofu skin that's sort of uh, translucent beige. Um, <laughs> so when, when it, and so you wrap the log of seitan in the yuba and then bake it. However, prior to baking, it looked like a log of shit wrapped in a condom. <laughs> so, but it tasted delicious. It tasted fine. Um, ha however... Uh, so the next year, over the next <laughs> year or so, I went online and found a whole bunch of different seitan recipes mm -hmm. and made them and 
decided, oh, I like this from that one, I like that from the, you know, and just picked and choose what I like from each recipe to make sort of what I have now. Mm -hmm. um, Is that the recipes on your laptop? Yep. Are you going to share any culinary secrets with us today? Sure. I found that putting some uh, chickpea flour mm -hmm. in with the seitan helps with a texture that I like. Mm -hmm. um, Are you going to share the recipe with us today, Stephen? So it's uh, vital wheat gluten, mm -hmm. more gluten flour, same thing. Mm -hmm. Chickpea flour mm -hmm. and nooch. Mm -hmm. So it's a cup and a half of the gluten, quarter cup of chickpea, quarter mm -hmm. cup of nooch, and then uh, a proprietary blend of herbs and spices. Right. Like today, uh, I'm using what's called savory. Mm -hmm. I, it smells like a mix of the things that I put in. It smells nice. Mm -hmm but it's not what I've typically used in the past. Okay. Um, I'm sure it'll still come out wonderful. Yeah, I mean, typically I use um, sage and thyme. So that go that does go in the, sage and thyme does go in the broth mm -hmm. um, that this then simmers in later. And that is a mixture of two things. It's uh, just uh, the chicken, vegan chicken base. Mm -hmm. And some of this will go in here as well. Um, and then uh, soy sauce or brags, mm -hmm. which I hope we have. Uh-oh. Uh, um, Let's go check on that. Yeah, otherwise we're just going to have to salt it a bunch. Um, onion powder, garlic powder, thyme, sage, nooch. That's mm -hmm. basically the recipe. And then whatever kind of breading you want knife. Thank you. Panko? Panko breadcrumbs? Yeah, panko or, you know, you want to make more of a fried chicken kind of thing. Mm -hmm. That's fine too. Um, garlic. Looks like you've got plenty of soy sauce there. Yeah. Cool. Thank you for sharing. Sure. And as you notice, the only things I measured were the, like all the spices and stuff I, I just sort of do by eye. So it comes out a little different each time, I guess. Mm, it's always delicious. Thank you. This is my all-time favorite seitan. You're truly a satanic master. Thank you. This is the broth that the seitan slices will be simmering in. Keyword is simmer, low simmer, not boil which is what I have done wrong multiple times in the past, attempting to make seitan with a pleasing texture and consistency. Mm -hmm. And how so, much have you put in? I uh, put in so far, how much? You can't really see there, uh, about a cup. Dang. So see, so here I have a good front. Oh, well, Yikes. Oh, there goes the mixing spoon. And this is just enough. Mm -hmm. Maybe a little. Wait a minute, that's gonna feed all of us? Just that one yep. piece of seitan? This is how much I Dough? make. Amazing. Amazing. I'm thinking, and we have so many leftovers. Yep. Wait, how many of us are there? Like eight? Seven. Seven of us. Yeah. And we're gonna have leftovers. The more you need the seitan, the stiffer it becomes. Mm -hmm. So you want to figure out a balance between too rubbery and too spongy. Yeah. And then you let it sit for a while while that's boiling and mm -hmm. then coming to a... That is in the broth. Yes. Yes. So this is good. So I will just put that, log it a little bit there. Log it. And then that'll be good until later you said it's still a little too fluffy so you're adding a bit more yeah vital wheat gluten. right because I, and i did not use all of the two cups of water so I'm just adding a little bit but not needing too much 
So you only added a sprinkle of Vita Weak Gluten mm -hmm. and needed a little bit more, but that made a big difference. The consistency is right now. It's less spongy. Yep. And so you are just letting this log rest for how long? Uh, basically until the broth comes to a boil and cools back down. Okay. Ten minutes. Ten minutes-ish. Yeah, I don't make it in a loaf. I cut it into slices now. Mm-hmm. What's that, a quarter inch thick maybe? This could actually get stretched out a little further. Mm -hmm. So it doesn't look like much, but it yields a lot of cutlets. Yes. And you'd eat like two or three. Yeah. For, for, for a meal, right. Yeah. Yep. Like dumplings, they sort of just get dropped into the simmering broth. Mm -hmm. And they simmer for an hour, right? Yep, covered. Covered. Low simmer. Mm-hmm. Because if you boil it and it's too hot, they come out like dish sponges, which is not the texture we're looking for. And you can see that it's got like a smooth sort of texture to it here. Mm -hmm. Not too many bubbles. All right, so it doesn't get too bready. Yeah. Not bready, not spongy. Correct. I know we are repeating ourselves here, but I want to spare you the guilt of not really wanting to eat three pounds of spongy seitan and making yourself eat it anyway. It's edible, but it's not delicious. I still have some in my freezer. I am going to make it into meatloaf because meatloaf hides a multitude of sins. On the other hand, Steve says, don't be so scared of letting it boil that you leave the seitan in tepid water. It actually has to be simmering. Once the seitan was simmering, we arranged the cheese and charcuterie plate and savored it immensely. Briere from yes, Rebel Cheese. Yum. Yum. I'm excited to try these two. Something uh -huh. for that. This Is one. Is there another tiny spoon Better here? taste good. Briere, barn cat, Truffle chef. It looks like it came from the barn cat. <laughs> Not. <laughs> that, that is the wrong cheese, Dave. That looks oh, really good. Like that, okay, golden. you can eat it now. Thank you. <laughs> so I'm going to take a small piece out here and we'll check. So what's going in the breading? Flour, salt, pepper, garlic, onion, and a little chili uh, powder, but I use this instead. Did you say panko breadcrumbs as well? Not yet. Okay. Actually, this time oh. we're using cornflake crumbs. Pretend that's not from and animals. It's Pretend this is seitan. Now for the dredging. The dredging? The dredging. What's that, Camille? This is banana bread from the Post Punk Kitchen with chocolate chips i forgot to take a process video yesterday so and there's another loaf that you made which is somewhere over it's here. all gone we ate it. oh no there it is there's a little bit left it was delicious oh yeah and how long do you leave them in there for just a couple minutes just until they turn a nice golden brown yeah, because it's already cooked, so we're just heating up the inside and frying, you know, crisping the outside. Ready? Nice. All right. So you can have this piece. Thank you. It's hot. That's good. That's BS. <laughs> Listening to Bones and all. Oh. <laughs> well, Ren read it already, right? 
Yeah. They read it in like uh -huh. 20, less than 24 hours, right? No. And for dessert, we had pecan pie, apple pie, and a bunch of ice cream and fruit options. The next day, a bunch more goodies arrived belatedly, so we made up another cheese plate and enjoyed it over a board game. And that night, so instead of leftovers, because you know everything is gonna get polished off eventually, we did homemade poke bowls. The vegan tuna and salmon were fun to try, although I do prefer the marinated tofu. Yours is way more aesthetically pleasing than mine. Thank you so much, Judy and Jason and David and Adrienne and Steve and Jason. I am so, so grateful for your friendship. So you it's double-sided. So. I think this thing is really creepy. You agree?